Hey y'all, what's cracking? Welcome to Helping Humans with Zen Jen. On today's episode, we're talking all about daily routine. I briefly went over this in my last episode, Momentum. I will link that below, so if you want to watch that, you can. But I'd like to go over how every day is a new day when you wake up. You've got this shot at this thing called life every single day. It's a clear slate for creation, if you will. So this energy that you have subsides when you go to sleep at night. And as your energy subsides, your vibration literally rises back to that of your natural state of frequency. This is exactly like a cork. When you pull it underwater, there is resistance, but when you let go, it bobs back up. Right away in the morning, you get a choice. So which direction are you going to lean? Do you pick up where you last left off yesterday and therefore bring that energy into today? Because that's what 90% of people are doing. All of your energy from yesterday is being recycled into today. And that is because of momentum. And like I said, if you haven't seen this episode, I'll tag it in the description below. So we have to learn to get out ahead of this momentum and to get the momentum going in a direction that is wanted ultimately. As I was writing this, my Apple Watch literally pulled up a quote as a reminder that said, Life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. That's a quote by George Bernard Shaw. And that was just so heartfelt and sentimental for that time. Because you are not lost. You are right here. And it's all dependent upon where your focus is going in each and every moment. So what can we do about it? Get your pen and paper out right now and you can write down these steps for your morning momentum daily routine. When you first wake up, usually your initial reaction is to grab your phone and start checking through it. Do not do this right away because you do not know what you're getting yourself into when you go on your phone. Instead, when you've awoken, realize like, hey, I'm laying in my bed, I'm comfortable. Relax and kind of enjoy the way your body feels as you are laying in your bed and just lay there for a little while. It's this kind of fuzzy floating feeling as you come back into your physical body. So start with the appreciation of your physical apparatus. Start with your feet. Think them out loud or in your head when you are laying in your bed. Thank them for being your support all day long and for all that they do for you all day long. Literally, talk to your body. Communicate with it. Prepare it for the day and kind of give it this run through of what your plan is for that day so it knows, so it can embrace with you what is to come. So you can get ready to be ready and get out ahead of it. So go up from your feet and go through your entire body as you are laying in bed before you get out. Your toes, your nails, your skin, your bones, your blood, your cells, your arteries, your muscles, your ankles, calves, knees, butt, all of it, lungs, organs, all of it. Whatever you can think of, think that part of the body. And if you want, you can physically touch it along the way. Otherwise, just sit and visualize it in your head. But ultimately, be thankful for your body's support and the fact that it literally keeps you alive every single day of your life thus far. Your blood does not get time to stop pumping. Your airways do not stop needing air to flow in and out of them. So show yourself love first and foremost. Start your day with love. Because if you want to receive love in your life, you must first give love. And the most important way to give love is to give it to yourself. So after body appreciation, it's time to show your mental some love too. We continue the morning momentum 
and we make it to the most important step of all, meditation. Meditation has been one of the things on my life journey that has been the most life-changing thing. Because when you quiet your mind for as little as even 16 seconds, you literally switch your brain's focus from overthinking mode into the receiving mode. The receiving mode is a frequency that we need to be in in order to receive answers for our questions, solutions to the problem. It is literally a different frequency from the answer to the question, the solution to the problem. It's not a place or time to find these answers. It is a state of mind. It is a vibration within your body that you emit out. The asking mode, like I said, is different frequency from the answering mode. So you just need to switch your frequency or your vibration accordingly. And meditation does this for you. Meditation, first and foremost, is a feeling. When you close your eyes, you're shutting down one of your senses, therefore enhancing another sense. We are training the brain to focus. That is the most important thing ever, is to have control over the mind. Meditation puts you into the receiving mode, like I was saying. And I'm gonna teach you a simple method that I use every single day for like the last three to four years. Anyone can do this, okay? 10 to 15 minutes is all you need, all right? So first and foremost, you see me like up on this cushion. This is a meditation cushion. All right, what we're gonna do is set your phone's timer for 10 to 15 minutes. Start with 10 if you would like. Then we are going to close our eyes. You can sit or you can lay, whatever feels better for you. But just get into the observing mode. Breathe in, deep, breathe out. If you want, you can say, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, as you breathe. Because your mind is so used to overthinking, it may not be easy at first, but it is not impossible. All you need to do is quiet your mind for 16 seconds. You don't need to count. All you need to do is set that timer and sit with your eyes closed and observe your mind for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you choose. You can choose to listen to your breathing during that time. Like I said, the inhale and the exhale. Or you can also listen to what I call the ringing in my ear. If I'm quiet enough, I can literally hear this ringing noise in my ear. I've learned it's called the natal drum. This ringing noise is a good focus for you during meditation. You can also listen to a fan or any consistent noise that's not too distracting in the room. There's always a noise that you can listen to. Another one you can do is feel for your heartbeat. So what you're doing is when you have a thought during this time that you are meditating, you're choosing to observe the thought, not try to push it away, and also not trying to think about it. That is when we remind ourselves to shift our focus and focus on our breathing or focus on that noise or a combination of things to stay focused. Then your alarm will ring and you are done. You don't have to do anything else, but eventually you will be able to feel what it feels like to meditate. It's like a body sensation, tingling, warmth, whatever. Everyone is different. You may have visuals, but you may not see anything in your mind and that's okay. You are just training the mind to focus. After successfully meditating, you are in the receiving mode. And this is the mode of allowing whatever you want into your life. But this all begins with thoughts. Thoughts are the first step in the manifestational receiving mode. So usually after my meditation or after, I will literally receive a thought. And this thought feels like a good idea. Some may even brush it off as like nothing, 
But this thought is very important. When you receive thoughts, they are different than when you think thoughts. Receive thoughts are pure. They feel good, they feel right, they feel like knowing types of thoughts, okay? So when you receive this thought, you are receiving it in a specific time and place for a reason. I found personally that if I write it down or I put it off till later, that's not nearly as powerful as when I immediately received that thought. Those are received thoughts, and if you follow them, they are thoughts that come directly from source, whoever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. But they will lead you on your path of what is to come for your life journey. They are pure, 100% right, known thoughts. So your emotions are your guidance. This is something that I will talk about more specifically later on in a later episode of this series. But just know for now that if a thought arises or even anything external in your life comes about and it feels just good, right, or sure, and you know it's good, it is, okay? Trust your good feelings because they are good signs. Go in that direction. My favorite analogy for this is the hot stove. You put your hand on the stove. Is it hot? Take your hand off. That is the guidance. If it doesn't feel good, if it's burning you, it's not good, take your hand off. Get out of that. Focus your energy elsewhere. Go to where it feels good. Emotions are guidance. After you get your mind right, it's time to get your body right. You have officially tipped the scale to getting out ahead of waking up on the right side of the bed. Now we can get into movement medicine. This is for the body and the soul. This is the time to take the energy within our physical body and get it flowing in the direction that we wish. We can use our body as a tool to get momentum going. For me lately, this has been yoga. I just do it 15 minutes each day. If I can't in the morning, I do do it at night. This is a yoga with Adrian type of deal on YouTube. It's free. You can literally search any yoga you want to learn for any specific body part or anything. She has thousands of videos on YouTube if you want to try it out. My boyfriend is really into Qigong. This is kind of similar to yoga, but it's more freestyle flowing to get this energy moving throughout the body. These exercises in general are all about the energy flowing within our bodies and manifesting it into our entire lives. The law of attraction states what you emit out, you will get back. Some other things you can do to keep the momentum flowing deliberately is like, for example, when I am getting ready or am I am on my way to work, I listen to podcasts from whoever I'm kind of feeling for that day. Some examples of people to listen to are Abraham Hicks, Alan Watts, Terrence McKenna, Saad Guru, Wayne Dyer, Ram Das, Wim Hof, or Alex and Allison Gray. After meditation, you are open to receive in a different mode of interpretation. So listening to someone who really clicks with you will help you gain new insights, kind of this new perspective, and maybe even new revelations. Early on, listening to Abraham Hicks, this is what that did to me, finding out about Law of Attraction, which I will also be talking about in a later episode. But just utilize this energy of the receiving mode that you've put yourself into for good so you can receive. Usually after this, I just do whatever I feel inspired to do. Like I said, ask and you shall receive. So you will have to allow that answer to come to you and do what feels right to you during that time. Usually when I'm on my way to work and I've listened to my speaker, I'm then jamming out to my favorite music just to get me in the mood before work. I'm just trying to get myself feeling good before I go out into this uncontrollable life that we are a part of. 
because you get what you emit. So you need to emit out what you are wanting to get back. So also, I like to cook. I pick up my area, make sure it's tidy. I learn about something I'm interested in. I do reading, art. So literally just taking this receiving mode energy and doing whatever calls to you, which could be growth and learning. That's always my favorite thing to focus on. And focusing your energy into a positive, productive manner. Like I said, every day is a different day. So it's just good to get into that receiving mode and follow whatever calls you in each moment. That is why people say so often to be in the present moment and present living. So get to learn this routine and get it going with the momentum of it. And you will eventually know when you too are in the receiving mode. And like I said, ultimately, you can tell by the way you feel. So if you want to learn something new, channel your energy there, research it, feel it out, do what calls to you, and then write it down if you must. Milk it though. When that feeling comes and you know that's a good thought, milk that feeling. Get excited about it because you have this guidance within you. And it's the only guidance that you literally need. It's this inner guidance, this inner knowing. And it's only for you to know. It is literally personalized for you. So I can't wait to share this information about emotions and everything coming up. But I hope you enjoyed this daily routine. I hope this helps you out a little bit. My next episode is going to be about dreams. This is something that I didn't bring up in this episode because I feel like it deserves its own episode. So this is ultimately the very first thing I do upon waking up. I record and recall my dreams as much as I can. I will go over this more with you in the near future in a new episode. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I put up a new video about our February astrology on my episode of Intunology with Zen Jen. If you want to check that out, I will also link that one in the description below. But thank you guys so much. I appreciate you tuning in. Zenja now.